Hi, my name is Stan Bearden. Uh, recently retired from New Riverside Ochre Company as Vice President of Operation, but I'm still engaged on a daily basis looking for new deposits of ore, which is what I want to be talking about this morning. The Cartersville Mining District is one of the oldest mining districts in the entire country. Not the oldest, but one of the oldest. And the history goes back to the time when the Europeans ushered out the Cherokee Indian Nation in the Trail of Tears around 1830. When the Europeans came in and established their cities and living areas, they found deposits of natural resources, ores that could be mined. They came in as they landed on the east coast of the Atlantic Ocean, the U.S., they traversed in a westward direction, encountering the Appalachian Mountains and the Blue Ridge Mountains. They continued their march westward until they descended the western flank of the Appalachian Mountains and the Blue Ridge that we know as Pine Mountain, Vineyard Mountain, the higher ranges that you can see as you drive north on US Highway 411 towards White and Tennessee, you're paralleling uh, topographic highs. Well, the earlier pioneers of the country crossed the mountain range, and when they crossed the hills and hit the nice, flat, cultivated areas that we now use for pastures, they stayed. They liked it. There was water. The terrain was easy to traverse, and that's the reason why US Highway 411 is located where it is now, because it avoids the high terrain that the pioneers avoided. But when those civilization, civilizations were established here, mineral resources were identified because of the color changes of the soil. The ores that have been mined here in uh, descending order, the very earth, first ore was gold. But after gold, uh, iron ore, which is a very important mineral produced from this area, and gives rise to the very notorious iron furnaces along Lake Alatoona, the Etowa River. In fact, 10 million tons of iron ore were produced from this area. And the industry of iron ore here ended around the early 1960s when it moved to the Birmingham area because the ores were richer. There were plenty of sources of hardwood for charcoal and coal resources were there as well. So the iron ore industry, which was very important at the time, ended in the early 60s. Following iron ore came manganese, and this is one of the few places in the entire country where manganese has been mined on a commercial basis. Quite a bit of manganese was produced here, but it ended after World War II because of the increasing global network of mining opportunities that included Australia, Canada, other sources of manganese were available. So the manganese deposits here, which were very important at the time, were abandoned um, around 1940 and have not resumed. Following gold, iron ore, and manganese came ochre, which is the, the basis for this company, New Riverside Ochre Company. Ochre is, a, is an unconsolidated clay that's brown in color, tan, ochre colored, and it's used for aesthetics in any cementitious product from mortar cement to concrete and other applications, cart paths along golf courses and roofing shingles are colored. You can take iron oxide, ochre, and burn it or calcine it. It produces a variety of colors. That's a very important part of our business. There's been about 2 million tons of ochre produced in this area and New Riverside Ochre Company has been the only mining producer, operator of ochre since the early 1960s. There were dozens of companies operating here, but slowly, one at a time, they were either dissolved and solvent or acquired by New Riverside, and we uh, are the last man standing. The following gold, iron ore, manganese and ochre came barite. Barite, here, we've produced almost 7 million tons of barite, which makes it the, the most important barite producing country, uh, state, east of the Mississippi River. But all mines are finite, and we have exhausted the last 
ferrite mine just last year. It was in Emerson. With its closure, the barite industry here no longer exists. The only economic participation that we now have with barite is the uh, processing and selling of barite that we have in stockpiles, which will disappear also. It'll be used up in a short period of time. After barite, the next mineral exploited in the Cartersville Mining District is graphite. Uh, Lake Point in Emerson, uh, the Emerson Baptist Church. For those of us who were around when those developments were first worked, you noticed a black coloration in the soil there. Well, that was graphite, which is carbon. It was mined only for a brief period of time uh, around 1900. All of those minerals represent a very viable, ongoing economic engine of all those minerals that I've mentioned, gold, iron, manganese, ochre, barite, and graphite, only ochre is active now. The life that we have in ochre has not yet been identified, and that's what I'm working on now. I'm trying to document and prove the existence of future deposits of ochre. We don't know how much we have, but I know it's gonna be more than 20 years. It could be 40 years. But it's a very important business. If you express in today's dollars the value of minerals that have been produced from Bartow County, and when I say Bartow County, it, ex it extends beyond the Cartersville Mining District to include areas like White, Adairsville, Pine Log, pretty much from Ledge Mountain westward in Bartow County. That's outside the Cartersville Mining District. The Mining industry in Bartow County has generated over $3 billion worth of mineral value. And it is known that for every dollar, it's well documented, for every dollar of mineral value that is produced, seven additional dollars are generated downstream for transportation, further processing, chemical or physical alteration of the mineral, and then its industrial application. So. The $3 billion of value here, historically, represents about $20 billion of revenue. In the process of mining and processing and selling those ores, it takes employment, very important. In uh, the Cartersville Mining District and the rest of Bartow County, there have been over 150 million hours of wages paid. To put that into context, that would be one person working 2,000 hours a year for 80,000 years. It's a very significant industry. Mining along with agriculture are the two basic industries that, that provide our lifestyle, our quality of life here in this country, and in fact, throughout the world. In this area of the Cartersville Mining District, there have been dozens of companies operating here using thousands of people in the mines and in the plants. This has been going on for almost 2,000 years. I'm sorry, 200 years. We haven't made it to 2,000 yet because, as I said earlier, all the deposits are finite. The areas that have been affected by mining are required by law to be reclaimed. All mines, by definition of ore, are finite. They will not last forever. They're a temporary land use. It is by law since 1970s, the early 1970s, that for every acre that is disturbed by mining, it must be reclaimed. It must be restored so that it can have another productive use. It has to be sloped so that you can run a tracker over it. A three to one slope is as steep as you can get. You've got to stabilize it so that there's no erosion. So you've got to establish a permanent vegetative cover. That area, those areas here in Bartow County that have been disturbed, have been reclaimed. Unusual and excellent examples of reclamation can be seen in on East Main Street, the Cherokee Shopping Center, the car dealerships from the Belk store to Target. All of that area was mined by a drag line for barite. 60 acres of land, there was a hole 120 feet deep over that 60 acre track. 
it was reclaimed before the laws required us to reclaim. The Dellinger family had the foresight to restore the land for some additional purpose. And sure enough, 50 years after it was mined, it's now developed. In addition to that area on East Main Street, the Emerson Elementary School, it is now built on the oldest ferrite mine in the Carter's Mining District. It was called Big Tom. I guess there was a big guy who mined that in the late 1800s. It was mined by the Satterfield family, which evolved into the Dellinger family. The Big Tom mine is now covered 80% to 90% of the roof line of the Emerson Elementary School is built on top of a reclaimed mine. In that same immediate area, the Red Top Mountain Connector from Georgia Highway 293 all the way over to South Central Middle School, that area also was mined for barite. But the, so the land reclamation that was practiced by the Dellinger family preceded the mandate by the state of Georgia to reclaim the land. It was very contentious relationship between the regulators and the regulatees when these laws first came in. But all of that changed with environmental awareness starting back in the 60s with Rachel Carson's book of Silent Spring. It was learned that we needed to be more diligent in protecting these resources and protecting the land. And industry has learned in the last 20 years to get along with the regulators. We no longer have a contentious relationship. We have the same goal in mind, and that is to find the resources, be profitable, provide jobs, do it right, and preserve the land. And that's what we want to do. There's a favorite saying that we got that if it can't be grown, it has to be mined. And that goes back to the two fundamental industries of agriculture and mining. I think that what I need to do now is to let you know of another resource that we have here that is not natural. It's very unnatural, and that's the Etowah Valley Historical Society. I invite you to visit our homepage, and we also are located in the old courthouse, the 1903 courthouse that's adjacent to Sam Jones Church, United Methodist Church, and it's the old courthouse with a gold dome. That's where we are housed, and we have a wealth of resource that includes the mining industry. So, many of the things that I've touched on in this short presentation, you can find by visiting the homepage of the Etowah Valley Historical Society, and I encourage you to do so. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye.